Psalms chapter 46. Psalms 46. You know, if you would uh, think about Luke's recording in the 15th chapter, remember the time when Jesus talked about the uh, prodigal son, the lost coins, the lost sheep. But you know, sometimes we overlook them two verses that starts that chapter. And it, uh, and I think it's very important that we hear that. It said the tax collectors and the sinners wanted to hear Jesus speak that day. But during that time, the Pharisees and the scribes, they thought they knew everything. And they just wanted to complain and mumble and grumble. Uh, matter of fact, they started asking who Jesus was instead of hearing what Jesus had to say. And sometimes I think that's where we fall at this morning, is that we just mumble and grumble. We're not hearing what Jesus has to say to us. We're just uh, trying to make up what we want. Um, I found a little story, I think I shared with this before, but his name is Alexander. He's seven or eight years old, and uh, he had one of those days that everything went wrong. Disasters one right after the other. Now, you know, a seven-year-old with disasters, you can only imagine what's going on. He said nothing went right. He said it was a horrible, terrible, not good, very bad day. And for instance, when Alexander woke up that morning, he had discovered that he went to bed with gum, and guess where it ended up? In his head. When he got out of bed, he tripped over his skateboard, and then he dropped his favorite sweater in the sink of running water, and he said, I just knew it was going to be a horrible, terrible, not good, very bad day. Then he went to school, and it turned out that it was a horrible day there, too, and after school, he had a terrible experience at the dentist's office. He came home to supper. He was hungry and his mom had made cauliflower. And he hates cauliflower. And he said he turned on the TV and all that was on TV was a hugging and kissing stuff and he hates hugging and kissing. And then his bath water was too hot and he got soap in his eyes. He lost his favorite marble down the drain. When he went to bed, he found that Nick, his brother, took back the pillow that he gave him, and his Star Trek nightlight had gone down. He bit his tongue, and he called for the cat, but the cat decided to sleep in Nick's bed instead of his. He said, all in all, it was a horrible, terrible, not very good, bad day. And it's no wonder that when Alexander finally came to the end of his day, he said, I think I'll just run away. Isn't that the way we do it in our lives? When we just get about this full, we just want to run away. There used to be a commercial that said, Got cow gone, take me away. And uh, my mom had always prayed for cow gone, but it never did take her away. <laughs> I don't know why she did that. But, uh, but I'm sure we all felt days like Alexander we've, uh, where we've had so much stress and anxiety our nerves are frazzled but you know the Bible says we just need to learn to listen to Jesus and that's what I want to share with you this morning uh, a lot of people are searching and I got stuck searching from Genesis to Revelations trying to find a scripture or a formula for spiritual maturity that I could just jump in there and say everything's going to be fine. But you know what? There's not one in there. Trust me, I searched and I searched. The Bible, matter of fact, what I come up with, it says that spiritual growth and maturity only comes through stress and strain and anxiety and hardships. Because that's what draws us closer to Jesus. And when we get closer to Jesus, guess what we do? We start listening 
to Jesus. And that's kind of where I want to bring you up to this psalm. When this psalmist wrote this, he could be having one of those uh, horrible, terrible, not very good days when he wrote this psalm. But I think these are great comforting words. And uh, if you look at my Bible, I have mine mostly all underlined and highlighted because I go to this scripture very often when I need to find peace in what's going on in my life. So this morning I'm going to ask you to stand as we read God's Word and I'm going to pray for us. Father God, we do pray that you would give us a, a clear understanding of these words today. Then we can find the stress and the peace and your comfort in these words, Father. That we can be assured that you are our strength. Father, because we cannot do it by ourselves. Father, there are so many of us that have tried, including myself, Father, and I have to apologize, thinking I can get through a crisis all by myself. But Lord, you gave us each other. You gave us your word. You gave us neighbors. You gave us nurses and doctors. Father, you gave us Volunteers, you gave us people that would touch our lives that we never even knew, Father. They just come into our lives and they leave a giant footprint and they're gone as fast as they come. But Father, no matter what we are going through, you're right there. You're beside us. You're saying, lean on me. I'll get you through. Father, I pray that we can trust that this morning. That each of us can say that I'm going to trust God no matter what falls my way. Because, Father, I know that you can take something that's horrifying to us and you can make something good out of it. So, Father, I pray that you're glorified in all of our lives. That we may exalt you, Father, above all things. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, listen to the words of the Psalms. He says, God is our refuge and strength. Now, here's my favorite part. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and trump, trouble, though the mountains shake within its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth, he has made war cease to the ends of the earth, he breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Now listen. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Isn't that some powerful words when we look at that? And the more I study that, I, I lean upon these passages, scriptures, and uh, I want to give credit 
to the person that brought these scriptures to me and opened my eyes to these scriptures, and that was uh, Miss Thelma Carwin. She said, here you go. You'll need to know this song. And uh, I wrote it on a card, and, and sure enough, in my life, I've used this song. And you can too. Two things I'm going to tell you. I can summarize it in two things, but I'm going to give you the two things, and then I'm going to just do the whole message anyway. Number one, God is our help, help in the time of trouble. Amen. Number two, be still and know He is God. Amen. That summarizes the whole song. But I'm going to share a lot of things with you this morning. I've done some research, and, and uh, a few years ago there was a, a bunch of uh, sociologists, people, and all these fancy uh, psych doctors, and all these people got together, and they come up with a, a, a human stress test. And what they did, they rated things that happen in our lives uh, that impacts our mental and our emotional well-being. And they rated them according to the stress level that it produces. That stress level was expressed in what they call life change units, LCUs. So uh, I didn't write down all the things, but I took the test. And Lord, did I flunk. I had so many LCUs, I could put them out for loan. There was that many in there. But I want you to know that the worse the stress rating, the higher the LCU was. So I'll give you a few examples. Uh, if you were pregnant, you got 40 LCUs. Now that's the only one I didn't get to claim. Uh, things like even remodeling your home, gave you 12, 25. Christmas by itself gave you 13 LCUs. Uh, it went on in each thing. Uh, when we learn of a friend or maybe our own age that has died of cancer or is dying of cancer, or we go to the doctor and we get a bad result, uh, you know, just last week I went to the doctor and he says, well, I'm going to send you to another doctor because I can't take care of you. Why am I paying? You know, these are the kind of things I think about. But my LCUs went up. So I kept thinking to myself, I'm going to keep my LCUs low. So I'm not going to work. And things like uh, retirement, changing jobs, moving, uh, being robbed, all these things gives you LCUs. And uh, so they come up with this magical number. If you have 300 LCUs, Within 365 days, you would most likely have a nervous breakdown or a stress burnout. Mine was 750. <laughs> so I'm going to have my meltdown this morning. And <laughs> but the more I thought about that, I thought, you know, if everyone read that and took that for granted and they didn't pick up this, they're missing out something because I believe that when they said that humanly speaking, that's what happens. It really does. All these things cause stress. Stress can make you have heart disease. It can give you diabetes. Stress can do amazing things. But you know, if you trust in God, He can do amazing things as well. And that's what makes the difference. So when we look at this psalm, as I said, the first verse, make sure you underline it and you memorize it, that God is our, our help and strength in the time of trouble. Understand that. That no matter what's going on in our lives, that God is there willing and able to help us through it. And, and a lot of people will say, you really can't believe that. I say, yes, I can. Because I know that in my own life, God has done that. In the times that you want to give up, when you're at the end of your rope, and the knot is there, and you're hanging on to the little piece under the knot, you've been there, 
That's when God says, trust me fully, and He'll say, go ahead and jump. And He'll put us back up home, the mountaintop. God can reach into the deepest valleys. He can go through the darkest storms. And He can set you on that beautiful, magical mountaintop if we trust Him. And that's what He's telling us. Uh, you ever heard of the old saying of between a rock and a hard place? That's where we try to hide, ain't it? I know that's not a good word, but I love using it. So, you get between this rock and a hard place, and all of a sudden, we then we say, you know where I found God? Underneath that rock. And I tell people, no, God was with you. He just allowed that rock to be there so you could see Him. And then sometimes you get to a point where you just... I remember I was just about to the breaking edge and I went to the mailbox. Somebody had sent me a card and I read it. And it's powerful what a card can do. And I read this card and it said, May God give you all the rainbows you need. I have never forgot that in 17 years. And God can give us beautiful rainbows in the midst of the darkest storms. Martin Luther wrote a song uh, when he was surrounded by his enemies. Uh, sayings when uh, some people believe that he had read this song when he wrote A Mighty Fortress in Our God. Beautiful song, a powerful song. I'll share a few words with you. No, I'm not singing, but I'm just going to read them. It says, A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing, our helper he amid the flood. And through this world the devil's field should threaten to undo us. We will not fear, for God has will, his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. Our little word, one little word shall fall him. And then it ends with, The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sighteth. Let goods and kindreds go this mortal life also. The body they may kill. God's truth abides still. His kingdom is forever. Mm -hmm. Powerful song. And can you imagine being in the midst of, uh, uh, of being surrounded by your enemies to write a song like that? And I want you to know that God is still providing the strength that He gave Martin Luther. God is still giving great strength to all of us if we depend on Him. Let me give you an overview of this psalm and, and it will look a little different or a little uh, different when I broke it up. I broke it up in three sections. Verses 1 through 3, I think, deals with the nature of what the psalmist was saying. 4 through 7 uh, takes place of what's going on in society. And if you read that, it says, I will not be moved, even though the nations be falling apart. Is that not true today? Even though society is deteriorating because God is my refuge and my strength, I will not be moved. And then 8 through 11 is almost as if the psalmist just sat back and said, I see everything, I under everything, but... I'm just going to let God do God's will. Do His thing. And I'm going to trust Him. That's the hardest thing for us to do, is to trust the Lord in the midst of our crisis. But I want to assure you this morning that God is our refuge. Uh, the psalmist was familiar with that. He shared that over and over. And I remember even in the midst of uh, Thelma's last days, and even in her funeral, she wanted this shared. Because she thought that was so promising that God is always there to help us. 
And I just kind of look back the last 20 years and look at all the earthquakes and tsunamis and the tornadoes and the hurricanes that we're even fighting yet today. Uh, I looked at the uh, San Andreas Fault and they predict that one day part of uh, California is going to fall off in the ocean. Uh, people laugh and joke, but they're really serious. They believe the earthquake will break it off. And then, you know, there's the New Madrid Fault that affects us. There's eight states, Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, Arkansas, Kentucky, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and uh, Mississippi. All eight states is affected. We're really high up in that, but you know if it really goes as bad as they say, it's going to get us. And you know, I, I'm not worried because I know God will take care of us. Uh, the hurricanes, you know, think of all the people in the Caribbeans and Florida and all this, how they're preparing and fighting. And one little girl said, Jesus is with me all the way. I thought, man, she should be on every news channel there is. Every time they have an a, a announcement about the hurricane, she should be there. You know, but Christians, we sometimes get all worked up. We think about how the floods washed away our homes and our fields and our crops and how tornadoes come through and how the forest fire burned up all the, the forest. And, and we begin to cry out, what is happening in this world? Well, you want me to tell you what's happening? God is preparing for the return of His Son. Amen. He was bringing all the prophecy to truth all at once. And we're going to see these things. I want you to picture how the nations are crumbling. How the whole world is reacting. And I'm telling you, God is still on the throne. He knows what's going on. So when I was sitting there thinking, now I know this is goofy, but I'm going to share it anyway. I was thinking of this person and a song that this person wrote when I was thinking about all the tragedies going on. Uh, he wrote a, a, a song I'm going to show you some words with that but first I want to tell you uh, he had gone to church and uh, he could sing well and they had asked him to sing in the choir and he had uh, sung with the Blackwood Brothers from the church that was the members there he met this girl named Dixie and he just thought the sun rose and said in that woman and uh, he, he just was so excited about her all the time. And then um, it was about January 8, 1957, that uh, he had turned 22 that year, and he received from a draft board notice that he was up. Um, as a matter of fact, they classified him as a 1A, which meant that he was most likely going to be drafted within six to eight months. So on uh, January 12th, he released this song. And these are some of the words that he's, he wrote. Oh, well, I bless my soul. What's wrong with me? I mention like a man on a fuzzy tree. My friends say I'm acting wild as a bug. I can't seem to stand on my own two feet. Who do you think we have such luck? I'm a little mixed up, but I'm feeling fine. When I'm near that girl that I love best, my heart beats so it scares me to death. She touched my hand, what a chill. I got, I got her lips, and they're like a volcano that's hot. I'm proud to say that she's my buttercup. My tongue got tied when I tried to speak. My side shaped like a leaf on a tree. There's only one cure for this body of mine, and that's to have this girl I love so fine. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm all shook up. You know who I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Does that not describe our world today? Being all shook up? And, uh, you know, it was just by a fluke that
that a recording artist heard this, and this Elvis was working for $14 a week when he wrote that song and started singing it. And then he became, within months of, let me see how I want to make sure I'm telling you the truth. He was a truck driver, and they heard that, and he became the highest paid metal entertainer in the world within one month. When Elvis died, the airlines were clogged with people trying to get to Memphis. There was five tons of flowers sent for his funeral. People stood in lines just to take a glimpse of his coffin. And Elvis was noted for saying, I would give a million dollars for one week apiece. He recorded this song, All Shook Up, and it changed many people's lives. But I was reminded of one other time people had gathered in the street watching a funeral go by. And Jesus happened to be there that day. And wouldn't it have been an awesome day there when Jesus says, stop, I want to see. And he walks up to the casket. And just by his power alone, he touches the little corpse. And the body says, what? He got up. It happened to be a widow's only son. And the Lord blessed her by raising him from the dead. Now, woo, wouldn't that just give you the willies the rest of your life? And, uh, but I thought of that, how strong our God is. He can raise the dead. The Bible says that if we don't praise and exalt God, that the rocks will cry out, cry out to Him. And can you imagine this? This is our King of Kings, Lord of Lords. This is the same Jesus that was yesterday, that is today, that will be tomorrow. He has never changed. He is still walking around with the scars that He gave for us. Because to show us how much He loves us. I wonder if we've actually forgot how to relax. You know, the psalmist at the end of the psalm kind of just sits back. I kind of picture him with his feet up and he's reclining or his glass of tea beside him. He says, let it be, let it be, because there ain't nothing I can do. I'm just going to let God do. Because God knows best. I'm going to ask you some questions just to get your mind going. I wonder if you forgot to learn, if you have forgotten how to relax. Here's my questions. How long has it been since you sat down with your family and ate a meal together, and then after that meal, you just sat and talked and visited and had fun? How long has it been since you took a long walk in the evening just to watch the sunset? Or sat in a hot tub of water and read a whole chapter of a book without being interrupted? How long has it been since you just leaned back and relaxed and listened to some good, wholesome music? How long has it been? How long has it been since you spent a day, you took your watch off, and you just went and did whatever you wanted to do? I'm telling you, it's powerful. We live our lives in three words. I believe hurrying, worrying, and scurrying. Don't you think? That's the way we live our lives. But Jesus said, be still and know I am God. Be still and know. I'm always reminded at that time when I read that scripture that uh, when Patty was going through her time and pain was getting tougher and tougher and tougher, uh, we had a nurse that told her what you need to do is picture a place. And in that place you go and, and nothing in the world can go in that place but what you allow in there. So we were sitting there and she said, I want to go to a place. And I said, okay, let's go. And she described this place and it was such a beautiful, peaceful place. And, and she says, I see us sitting there in this green little melody, a stream running by, waterfall, all this stuff. What a peaceful moment. And I watched her heart rate, which was 140, because they couldn't control the pain. 
She goes to her place. And it went to 60. She's calm, relaxed. And do you know for several years when she hurt, she would say, let's go to our place. And when I feel hurt and pain, I go to that place. I still imagine her there. I still imagine that same thing. That's what God's telling us. Be still and know He is God. Be still and know He has everything taken care of. He's going to take the hardship and He's going to make it a good ship. As, and it's hard to believe this. Even when I thought when I lost Dean, I thought, how is God going to make good of this? But then I started seeing people get saved from that. God is good. People ended up not going to hell because of what I didn't even know He was testifying to people. But He changed lives. And He led people. He shared Jesus. I didn't think He would ever do that. But apparently He did. I remember this young man coming to me Crying, and he said, Now I understand what Dean told me. That Jesus can love me. Because I see how Jesus is loving you and your, your sons, even in this time. And when he gave his life to the Lord, all I could do was thank you, Jesus. Because that was a God moment. Had nothing to do with me, had nothing to do with Dean. But it was because of Dean's death that he was able to confess to the Lord. And, and there's many stories. You all have stories. But I wanted to just tell you this morning, God loves you. He knows you're hurting. For every tear you shed, I believe God shares with you. Because He says, I am with you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, for every hardship, I will provide a way. Not that it would go away, but a way that you can get through. And I'm telling you, that's what you need to grab a hold of. Now I'm going to wrap up here this morning, and I know if you're looking at your clocks, you're thinking, oh boy, what is going on here? But God just told me to come in and tell you He is with you. The sun is still shining above the dark clouds. In the midst of the valley, God can bring sunshine. He can bring peace. He can bring joy. Three things. God is always near and available. Two, God's power is greater than anything in this world. And three, God helps work even when we can't help ourselves. That's my thing. It's not until we finally give it to the Lord and say, I can't do it anymore. God said, I've been waiting for you to trust me. And He wants to grab a hold of it. He wants to wrap His arms around you. He wants to breathe the gift of love all over you. He wants you to be assured that He is there, that He loves you. He wants to take all your LCUs and throw them away. He wants you to trust Him. So I want you to grab a hold of that strength this morning. And no matter what the crisis is, that you can truly say, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Help me throughout. And uh, I can't give you too many examples. I can give you a lot of examples in, in the Bible where people will tell me that was in and this is now. I can only give you examples of what God's done for me. And I think that if you would look at my life, that you can see where God grabbed a hold of me and brought me through. Because I'm still here. I'm still loving the God.
that said, Be still and know I am God. So I'm going to ask you to come this morning. And I know that they prepared a, a song to sing, but I'm going to ask you now just to stand, bow your heads, and I'm going to ask you just to play. I just want to talk to you this morning. Will you stand? Bow your heads. No one's looking around. I'm going through a troubled time. <laughs> 